How the visual elements are arranged in the frame is called the composition. Now there's a heap to study about this topic and I'm barely going to be able to scratch the tip of the iceberg. And I'm pretty sure that's the correct saying. If not, it is now. Anyway, what I plan to do in this lesson is teach you a few of the essential things about composing your shot that are going to give you the greatest bang for your buck, so to speak. I'd like to show you some really basic examples and talk about the lead room, rule of thirds, plus I'll analyze a real project that I worked on while throwing in a tip or two. So let's scratch that iceberg. Here is a still image of our beloved Baker character. Now this area above his head is called the headroom. I'll speak about that in a moment. But this area towards his nose is called the lead room. And that is because he is looking in that direction. It's also called the nose room or lead space. I prefer the term lead room though. Now lead room is very important, especially if your character is moving, which I'll show you an example of in a moment. But here our character is looking to the screen left, so it's best that we actually move him over to the screen right so that he has more lead room. This feels more natural, especially if he was in a conversation with somebody else. So here's an example of a moving character. This is Red Nelp and he is running dead center in the frame and it doesn't quite feel right. That is because he doesn't have enough lead room. Let me emphasize this by making this a little bit more awkward. If I move him to the screen right, it feels like he doesn't know where he's going and he could run into something. But if I position him back to give him more lead room, it feels much more natural and fun. Now we're looking at another portrait shot of Baker. And can you guess what type of lens I'm using? That's right, 85 millimeters. So here we have our Baker and his eyes are dead center in the middle of the frame. So for something like this, this is way too much headroom. So what we wanna do is move him up on the frame to make him look a little bit better. Although this has gone slightly too far. We don't have enough headroom. So let's just position him down a little bit. So his eyes are about one third of the way down from the top. So this is a good amount of headroom and the shot looks pretty good. So now let's push in. So I've pushed the camera in and we've lost all that headroom. Is that a bad thing? No, because this is now a close up shot, but his eyes are still one third of the way down, which makes it look very natural. Now let's go even further. Okay, so we've lost the top of his head altogether. We're still keeping his eyes that one third of the way down. This is because of the rule of thirds. So what is this rule of thirds I've mentioned a couple of times now? Well, it's a composition notion that encourages us to avoid putting the subject directly in the center of the frame. How do we do that? Here's an image. Let's slice the vertical into thirds. And we'll also slice the horizontal into thirds. Now we have nine segments. If we place something of important along these lines, it's generally going to make a more appealing composition. And if we can put something of interest at one of these points where the lines cross, like say the character's eyes, that's a bonus. However, this is just a guide. There is a little bit of wiggle room. In a still image like this, everything stays perfectly put. But in your animated film, things are going to be moving around. The character is going to move and the camera is going to move. So things can't, and they shouldn't, stay perfectly lined up with these composition rules. Plus, the rule of thirds isn't the only composition rule that is out there. There's the golden ratio, golden triangles, leading lines, diagonals, triangles, frames in frames, and more. But the rule of thirds is probably the one that you need to know. And it's really easy to use once you understand it. If your character is moving to the right, then it makes sense to put him on the left. If your character is looking to the left, it makes sense to put them on the right. Plus, if you get the character's eyes in one of those points, that's a bonus. But as I said, all of this stuff is just a guide and it shouldn't be referred to as a rule because sometimes you do just need to have the subject in the center of the frame. It's all well and good for me to explain some of these things on mostly still examples. So let's have a look at a real project I worked on a few years ago. This was a TV commercial for an African um, alcoholic drink. I was responsible for the rigging and the animation. Now I didn't actually do the previs or the layout camera work, but I did animate the final camera. And I wanna show you some of this stuff that I've been talking about in action and how we can't always line things up perfectly when things are moving around. But anyway, let's take a look.
Malalo. Now that we've had a look at it, let's go back to the start and I'll just point out a few things with some drawovers as we go. So in our first frame, and everything is in the dead center, and that is okay. This is our establishing shot, and we're just establishing where we are. We're in a bowl of lemons. We scrub forward a little bit. Yeah, so we're dead in the center, and that's okay. Over here, you can see I've got a little bit of an anticipation before the door opens, and all our lemons fall out. Now that opening happens around the midline. You can see that's where all the lemons are falling out. That's okay. Next shot, they're moving down, and we've got some... Um, uh, some leading lines there. That's just the nature of a point of view shot. Then we have our hero lemon. He's a little bit left behind, but you can see he jumps onto the screen at the one third mark. We want to give him some um, lead room because he's jumping off that way. And then in our next shot, because in the, the last one he was jumping from screen left to right, I have to continue that movement from screen left to right. Otherwise we're crossing the line and you'll learn a little bit more about that uh, later on. And uh, that's because the director wanted the, this shot, the, um, uh, this one to go that way. So that's uh, one little trick that I did to avoid it. I just kept him moving in the same direction on the screen. So anyway, we're going down. Let's just fast forward a little bit. Uh, these guys are jumping off here. Now here's a total mistake. Uh, the, this guy just stops. Uh, that was not my fault. I swear I handed it off to them and he was moving. But um, in the final product, he just stands still like that. Oh well. Uh, here you can see these lemons are landing and they're all landing in about the third, um, uh, one third of the way in. That's our hero lemon there. We're jumping off here, we've got our two points of interest and they're about the one third of the way in on each of these. Now here the main action is about the one third of the way in for our hero lemon around there to give him um, a little bit more lead space to show that he still has room to move on the screen, right? Uh, here is the door closing. Uh, we want this main action, we want the hit to occur almost in the middle. Um, that, was, that was planned so that we can see um, as this lemon rolls off behind. You've got more, um, more space there. We're getting closer. Now here we want to show him speeding up so we reduce that lead space by uh, accelerating him forward. Here he squeezes through in slow motion and boom, we want, to, we want him to spend the most amount of time in this sweet spot up here which is where the lines cross. And we have our final pack shot. He starts at the bo uh, bottom left, and you can see that is one third of the way in. And the camera takes a few frames. There's a few frames of lag before he uh, before the camera follows. And that was intentional because I wanted it to feel like a real person was animating this camera. And he even the character even leaves the frame. That's because our cameraman was too slow to get up there. And we also want to pay attention to. Uh, the main thing, which is this is the pack shot. So the most important thing is the product at the end here, where it ends in the dead center. And that is uh, okay for it to be in a dead center as well. Hopefully that's helped explain a few things. Now before I go, I just want to reiterate a couple of the points before we move on to the next video. So first of all, when it makes sense, don't put your subject in the dead center of the frame. Remember the leading space, especially if your character is moving. You want to give them some space to move into. And also think about the fact that a person has to move your camera. The camera shouldn't always perfectly follow the subject because the camera operator doesn't know how the subject's going to move. There's always going to be a little bit of lag for reaction time. However, some movements can be predicted. All right, that's enough for now. I'll see you in the next video.